breakfast we got some amazing maracuja drink mm -hmm. that we also got that when we arrived and we hope to get it again <laughs> some fried egg and then together today with tr typical uh, coconut rotis and you eat it together with these um, what did they say potato onion um, kind of chutney and this is a uh, coconut uh, sambal so it's scraped coconut with pieces of garlic chilies and all kinds of herbs and then some fruit so let's enjoy my god it looks amazing <laughs> hello again so actually we forgot to update you guys about our day yesterday we spent it in Anurudapura in the whole um, yeah old town let's say uh, which is quite big so we actually took a tuk-tuk that drove us around from the one side scene to another we can recommend in the sense of that it's the easiest way to go around and we see most people doing that there are some people that rent a bike by their place of stay although it's so hot i don't know <laughs> if we could have handled so yeah, we rented a tuk-tuk for about, I think it was 3,000 rupees and it spent five hours with us uh, during the day and guiding us a little bit, so that was really interesting. If you want to get a taste of the rich history that Sri Lanka has to offer, then the sacred city of Anurudhapura is a must-stop on your travel itinerary. Together with Kandy and Polonarua, Anurudapura is part of the famous cultural triangle. We absolutely love this place and it just might have been one of our favorites on our three-week backpacking trip. Its religious significance makes the destination an important pilgrimage site. Over an area of around 40 square kilometers you will find many remnants of gigantic dacobas and temples. The easiest way to explore this huge area is by renting a bike or a tuk-tuk to get around. You will need to buy a day pass, which you can purchase near the archaeological museum and it costs around $25. It's good to know that there are also many sites for free and actually the very first temple that we visited was not included in the day ticket. It costed an additional 250 rupees. This first Buddhist temple that we visited had quite a unique design as it's carved out of a rock and set around the lotus pond with carvings of playful elephants. It's actually possible to climb around the back to the top where you can find a small viewing platform from where you can watch the surrounding rice fields. Do pay attention when you descend to this beautiful Buddha shrine, which you can find underneath the gorgeous tree. Here we arrived at the ruins of an old monk residential complex. So we're inside of Anuradhapura right now and we have a lot of ruins here and here you can see how it looked like in the beginning uh, thousands of years ago. Yeah, it's supposed to be from around 200 AD. This was the chapter house uh, where the monks of Abayagiri twice a month congregated, confessed and rectified their mistakes. Yeah, well now it's only ruins. Nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, still some nice details. Yeah, they, the they still kept everything yeah. here. It's mostly known for its well-preserved moonstone. Moonstones were typical Sinhalese architectural elements, usually found at the entrance of a temple. 
The design of these moonstones are usually a half round stone with detailed carvings. In the center you can see a lotus flower surrounded by leaves and swans. In the outer circle you can see a row of animals. It typically shows elephants that represent growth, lions that symbolize energy, horses that stand for power and lastly bulls that represent patience. After that we pass by a big pool of water known as the elephant pond. It used to serve as an ancient water storage for the monastery. However, our guide actually told us it might have also been used as a pool for the elephants, hence its name and size. Next up we visited this colossal red-brown dagoba, which used to be over 100 meter high. In ancient times it was regarded as one of the greatest structures next to the famous pyramids of Giza. Today the red brick Dagoba only measures around 75 meter after its reconstruction, but as you can tell it's still breathtaking. The surroundings were just absolutely beautiful and we actually spent quite some time here just enjoying the atmosphere and also watching all the playful langurs which were just jumping around. It was just such a beautiful sight to see. Last up on our tour was this giant white stupa, which is considered one of the most sacred Buddhist places as well as one of the world's tallest ancient structures. Upon entering the temple grounds you will notice this wall with 344 elephant statues as well as many colorful Buddhist flags. The Dagoba is known to be home to some sacred relics of Buddhism, as allegedly some of the Buddha's ashes are enshrined here. Although a part of the stupa was under construction while we were there, it was still interesting to see how they actually freshen it up and made up for some quite nice pictures as well. Now we are heading out into town to just chill a bit by the lake. There are many places that are selling fresh juices, smoothies and coconuts and at really reasonable prices actually. We paid only about 160 rupees for a fresh smoothie which was the cheapest we encountered during our trip in Sri Lanka. As you can see the area is very serene, very green. Many families come here just to spend some time together by the lake and enjoy a drink in one of the many cafes. So here we have the typical rice from Sri Lanka, which is like a little bit uh, bigger, thicker, and we yeah. saw it grow uh, and on the sides. And fact, it comes from the rice fields from uh, the owner of uh, the guest house that we're staying. Amazing, right? Indeed. Then we have the crispy papadums. We have a little bit of a chutney. Yeah, he, he, what did like he say? It's like a carrot. Yes, there's like coconut uh, on there on top. It, yeah, and a bit spicy. A little bit it? spicy. We have the chicken curry. Also a bit spicy? Of course. <laughs> 
there we have what's like the other, another kind yeah of like curry. Fam a family of the cucumber and it's also it's a vegetable yeah. coconut curry and dal so lentils as well it looks amazing smells amazing i wish you could smell it <laughs> can't wait to dig it <laughs> how are you liking the food so far it's absolutely amazing it is exactly what you wanted <laughs> in this country so we're also being spoiled with a dessert. It's buffalo mm -hmm. custard. This is from the shop. We had a wonderful stay at our guest house called Waterfront Homestay. Our host was just so friendly and helpful with arranging drivers and information about all kinds of things. Nothing was too much. So we can really recommend this homestay if you're looking for one in Anrudapura. Now it's time for us to leave for Dambula or next stop on our itinerary. Thank you so much for watching and we see you next time. <laughs>